second and top ten within that group, right? So, and they're pretty darn good. And so we just watched um, Lewis, but their best guy might be Ray <laughs> McFadden. Redshirt junior number five in the nation just came back uh, in their duel against Princeton, won that one. So one and zero in the year. Josh Ramirez, the freshman from New Orleans, six and six on the year, and this will again be a big challenge for a freshman to go up against a veteran guy who's you know, been an All-American twice, fifth place and sixth place the last two years at the NCAAs. So hey, this, so one of the ways to think about that is, holy cow, I'm gonna wrestle the number five guy in the country. Or the other one is, man, I get an opportunity to wrestle number five guy in the country and go after it, do, do your thing and, and learn from this experience so that you have an opportunity to grow as you go back and watch the film in terms of how you match up with somebody of this caliber. Ramirez has been explosive too. In those six wins, he's got three pens and a major decision. So when he's won, he's won decisively. Obviously, that's that's impressive to see from a freshman. Definitely. Uh, if you anytime you can you can uh, throw someone on their back and end the match sooner, that's that's way better not only for you but for your team. It doesn't matter who you're at. This is in college. It doesn't. You don't see a lot of those happen very often. Fadden wrestled Kusis last year in this duel, won 15 to six on reach an ACC championship. He's only lost four matches in the last two and a half seasons. Yeah, he's pretty good. It's not he's bad. pretty good, yeah. Yep. But I think, to be honest with you, this is, this is sort of a perfect opportunity for West Virginia based on uh, how well do we rebound and regroup and refocus from Saturday at Pitt which wasn't very good. And also, how do we use this as, as, the, as the next stepping stone to moving forward? And so far, you see Ramirez has done a pretty nice job uh, with McFadden here in the first period. We're about halfway through the first period. And this team last year, has you know, a lot of guys back from last year, they were able to beat a couple ranked teams here at the Coliseum. So you have that belief too that you can do it because you beat the Pitts and the Oklahomas here last year. There's a pretty nice high crotch. Oh. Went right over the head for the t for the, the attempt at. Uh, he's not going to go next. That's probably a takedown. No, and he's the guy that matters. So, but he's got around the around the far angle, and usually you're going to get a takedown when you do that. And, and there it is. So two nothing with a minute even left here in the first period between West Virginia's Josh Ramirez and Virginia Tech's David McFadden. Hard work on top. McFadden, 63 and 13 in his career, 32 and 5 in duels. Yeah, and I'm going to guess some of them have been against pretty good people, right? You, you would know. think. Might well, happen from time to time. He was out, of course, but the Hokies have already wrestled two ranked teams this year in Missouri and Northwestern, lost them both, which is why they, they come in at 1 and 2. But right. still, with the talent they have, that's why they're 14th in the nation. Uh, I think Missouri's like somewhere in the top 10, like maybe nine, and, and uh, Northwestern in the top 25. So, um, you know, like every line, everybody in the country, I had, oh, that was not necessarily the best idea in the world. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty high risk and potential, not so um, rewarding uh, roll through by Ramirez. And look, these are the things. That, so, when you are transitioning, from high school into college, a lot of times you might be able to get away with that uh, against some people who uh, are high, even high caliber in high school. But we're talking about a guy who, as you just said, has only lost a handful of matches over the last couple of years. He's been there, done that. And when you try to do some high risk things against people like that, what usually ends up happening is you pay for it. And the challenge, as we keep going back, you're trying to get off the bottom <laughs> it's a big deal getting off the bottom. And we are trying to create some space and do it, but whew. Green to first. Red. So two nothing after the first period in favor of David McFadden. A minute even of riding time. Ramirez will begin the second period on top. I just like to see him spend a little time up here. Well that looked like a false start too. But he's going to get warned for stalling if he doesn't let him go. So he's not going to spend much time up there at all. <laughs> About five seconds. <laughs> right. That's what we saw with Cusis as well in the previous match. Just well, not able to extend that, that time on top. So, but look at the difference, all right? Um, 
you just saw Ramirez spend a minute getting pounded down on the mat, and McFadden is up on his feet and out within five or six seconds. Two points, McFadden. Nice shot by McFadden, too, yeah. right there. Another takedown makes it five nothing as the writing time goes back over a minute in favor of David McFadden. So the other thing that you see in, in the real high-end, high-caliber people, yeah, they've got their things that they do really well, but they also make a lot of mini adjustments and adapt to what you're trying to do to shut them down pretty well, which is why they can continue to score and why they stay ranked up real high. They're not easy to close down. Oh, there's a bar and a half. That is not a good spot to be in on the bottom. We saw Ramirez start this match pretty well. But like you said, Justin from McFadden was able to get on top and wear Ramirez down, quick escape, and then another takedown to make it 5 nothing. So you're not going to be real threatening to the guy on top, laying on your stomach, just trying not to get rolled over. And he might get called for stalling here. Uh, because now he finally gets up to a knee. And, and doing something to get your arm loose from that bar. There's a nice an, an escape. And what happened was McFadden tried to run that half Nelson. Oh, boy. Again, this is, he tried to step way, way, way around on a guy who, um, pretty decent scrambler. So, either, so, okay, there's giving the takedown right on the, on the border, on the edge, and I think it's a legit takedown. Okay. Nope. Impressive control there to, to keep him in bounds, knowing that time was short, and get that final final two point takedown. Well, you know, that's uh, that's why he is where he is, right? I mean, number five in the nation. That's right. Exactly. Seven one now, and the news gets worse with Josh Ramirez. He's on bottom again for this one. So, so you want to see how we do on the start, right? Are we going to try to? So he tripoded up allows Ramirez, uh, Ramirez sort of allows McFadden to come in as he wants to. McFadden just decides to let him go. I'm going to play a takedown, let him up, see if I can split the score a little bit more. Ramirez just checking out, uh, looking at a Jay Cox out of the corner of his eye to be like, can I, can I get a couple seconds here? Can I stall this a little bit? And now we're back. Now we're back to the grapple. And, and the answer to that is no. No. <laughs> no, thank you. No. As you said, we're on that scoring border now. Five point lead plus a riding time point of things stand now. So the next couple, this little bit will be key as the headgear's chucked out of bounds because now you're looking at can you keep it a decision rather than a major decision. And that, that's right. You're exactly right. So if he can keep it to a regular decision, that'd be great. If he can actually score an offensive point, a takedown somewhere along the line, I think that that bodes real well too. He's, he's just got to be a little more technically sound. And uh, that far reach like that, you also got to be careful with that, with that reach on top of people's heads so that they're so um, uh, focused on the potential, you know, hand to the face thing that you give up a point easy that way too. I could have got one right there. Oh, there's a nice little club in the head. Running time points been clenched, so it's 8-2 really. In favor of David McFadden and reaching attack here at 174 pounds against Josh Ramirez. Nice job sitting around the corner. McFadden just trying to come up and come out the back side. Ramirez locked. Let's call this stalemate. How about a stalemate, dude? Or, we're, or let's do this and run on his head. Got no points yet. No points yet. He got seven seconds. He's got to keep fighting. He's not in a good spot. And there's a scramble go out of bounds. So really what you had in the last two matches, when you think of it, West Virginia has saved two team points, right? Right. Because they kept wrestling right to the end, even though you know you're over, you are overmatched. There's no doubt about that in these in these matchups. But wrestling right to the end allows them 